Hi everyone, my name is Nurul Aini binti Ibrahim from Mama Fahbi, UITM Bandaraya Melaka. Now, I would like to respond to the questions given during my tutorial. The scenario is, two recent graduates join the same organization. Both are recruited as marketing executives. Both work long hours and have tight deadlines to complete their assignments. They are under constant pressure to complete projects and meeting deadlines. One executive is increasingly feeling fatigued and despondent and has taken several days of sick leave. The other is getting the work done and seems to enjoy the challenges. The scenario above mainly describes about stress. Members of the floor, do you know what is stress? According to Lazarus 1978, Stress can be defined as a psychological state of the individual which develops because the person is faced with situations that tax or exceed available resources, internal or external, as appraised by the person involved. With reference to the tutorial questions, both marketing executives reacted differently towards their assignments because they have different types of behavior. The executive who is facing stress is having types A behavior. This type of behavior is characterized by a chronic sense of urgency and an excessive competitive drive. They are individuals who are aggressively involved in a never-ending struggle to achieve more and more in the shortest time possible and if required to do so against the opposing efforts of other things or other persons. Some of the main characteristics are always moving, walking and eating rapidly, feeling impatient with the rate at which most events take place and strive to think or do two or more things simultaneously. On the other hand, the other executive who is managed to get the work done is having type B behavior. The type B behavior is characterized by a desire to do more than one assignment or task at any one time but at his own pace. He also likes to participate actively in any type of challenging events and take it professionally. The person concerned will try to avoid confronting any assignments or situation directly but more in a subtle manner. Some of the main characteristics are never suffer from a sense of time, urgency with it accompanying impatience, feeling no need to display or discuss either their achievements or accomplishments unless such exposure is demanded by the situation and playing for fun and relaxation rather than to exhibit their superiority at any cost. Thus, the organization can help these employees to cope with stress through the organizational approach using some of these strategies. The first one, selection and placement. As we know, certain jobs are more stressful than the others and that individuals can differ in their response to stress situations. Thus, selection and placement decisions should take this fact into consideration. For example, individuals with little experience, an external locus of control or type A behavior which tend to be more stress prone should be hired for less stressful jobs. Second, goal setting. Based on research done, we concluded that individuals perform better when they have specific and challenging goals and receive feedback on how well they are pro progressing towards these goals. The use of goals can reduce stress as well as provide motivation. Specific goals that are perceived as attainable clarify performance expectations, thus it can help reduce stress. The third strategy job redesign. Redesigning jobs to give employees more responsibility, greater participation in decision making, 
more meaningful work, more autonomy and increased feedback can reduce stress because these factors give the employee greater control over work activities and lessen dependence on others. The fourth strategy is organizational communication. Increasing formal communication with employees reduce uncertainty by lessening role ambiguity and role conflict conflicts. Sorry. As we know, perceptions do play an important role in moderating the stress response relationship. Thus, management can use effective communications as a means to shape employees' perceptions. And the last strategy is wellness programs. It is a program that gets the support of the organization that focuses on the employee's total physical and mental condition. As an example, the regular exercise program carried out in the morning before starting the daily routines. The assumption underlying most wellness programs is that employees need to take personal responsibility for their physical and mental health while the organization is merely a vehicle to facilitate this end. And with that, I thank you.